Before I begin this video, I must point out that according to the Communications Act of 1934, it is unlawful to operate, manufacture, import, market, or sell jamming equipment. This video is for educational use only. Uh, the lab setup in this video is virtual and no real Wi-Fi networks were jammed during the creation of this video. To start, you will first need a fully operational Raspberry Pi 3 with Kali Linux installed and configured. So I'm going to boot up into Kali remotely. Now if you are curious as to what the laws are regarding jamming equipment, you can head on over to FCC and uh, check out the laws concerning jamming equipment. Now aside from just having uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 and Kali Linux installed, uh, there are a few other requirements that you will need. Uh, you will need a wireless card capable of injection. In this video we are using the TP-Link. Um, this is just plug and play so you can easily just plug it right into your Raspberry Pi and you're good to go. Um, there are other Wi-Fi adapters that have better range um, such as the Alpha Wi-Fi adapters but they're not plug and play but if you're looking for better range it's recommended to use the Alpha rather than the TP-Link. Now aside from just having Kali Linux installed you will actually need uh, Scapy and Python installed as well um, but they're usually pre-installed uh, with Kali Linux and we can go ahead and check that we have those installed by opening up a terminal and first we'll check if Scapy is installed and as you can see it is already installed and then we can check and see if Python is installed which is now if you don't have those two installed it's possible that you don't actually have the full version of Kali and if that's the case you can check out some of my other videos that uh, show you how to install the full version of Kali Linux as well as getting Kali configured so at this point you should have the full version of Kali Linux you should have your wireless Wi-Fi adapter plugged in you should ensure that your Kali installation is updated now we can check that real quick Okay, so now we have everything updated. Uh, be sure that you check the description uh, in this video because I will provide a few links to other videos that might be of importance before you actually get started. I should point out that the USB Wi-Fi adapter that you have plugged into your Raspberry Pi should not be connected to any network. And it shouldn't be on auto-connect. You don't want it to auto-connect to a network when the Raspberry Pi is turned on. Now we can continue by creating a Python file that is going to be used to jam our surrounding networks. So if you have the terminal open still, just navigate to root. Let's actually clear the screen first. So let's see what we have. And we need to create the directory Wi-Fi Jammer. I already have it created. So what you will do is use the following command to make that directory and then press enter and that will create that directory then we will navigate to that directory and then we will be creating this Python file called Wi-Fi Jammer and we can use nano to create that file now your file should be blank because you haven't put anything in it yet now the script that we will be using for this um, you can actually find on github so I have to point out that this is licensed by Dan. So Dan and other contributors are actually responsible for the Wi-Fi Jammer Python script. 
we can view the script by clicking on Wi-Fi Jammer that py you can see the raw form and then we can just select all of this copy and then you would just paste it into your Wi-Fi Jammer py file and then after you have it pasted just save the file control X Y and then enter to save it so now that we have our file saved all we need to do essentially is run that Python script and then it will start jamming the network. Now if you want more details on how to run the script and other ways you could use it um, on GitHub, uh, they do provide a little bit of information here on how you could use it. But the, the simplest method is to just uh, use that command. So let's go ahead and run the command and see what happens. Now you must make sure that you are actually in the Wi-Fi Jammer directory before you run it. And as you can see it has started monitor mode using the USB Wi-Fi adapter. So it is working and we can confirm this by taking a look at the networks on a tablet. Alright, so here we have our 10 inch tablet and as you can see it is picking up various uh, wireless networks in the surrounding area. And it is disconnecting and reconnecting. You can see that it keeps switching from saved to connected. So our Raspberry Pi is continuously jamming the network. Now if you wanted to use the Raspberry Pi strictly as a Wi-Fi jammer, then you will need to ensure that it is both configured for auto login and configured to execute the Wi-Fi jammer script at startup. As I stated earlier in the video, you can find out how to enable auto login by viewing my previous video. Now, in order to run that Wi-Fi Python script at startup, we will need to uh, make changes to a file. And that file is going to be rc.local. And we can use nano to edit that. And then here we need to put in our command to run the Wi-Fi jammer script. So we put in the path to that file. And then we can save this file. Control X, Y, and Enter. Now that we have that file saved, what that will do as soon as the Raspberry Pi boots up it will run that Python script but we actually need to add executable permissions to that file and now that we change the permissions for that file it will execute when it is ran uh, from RC local. So essentially you really don't have to do anything else with the Raspberry Pi. If you have auto login enabled uh, and you have this file here edited so that the Python script runs on startup then all you have to do is plug the Raspberry Pi in and then within uh, 60 seconds or so it will start jamming the surrounding networks. Now keep in mind that this video is for educational purposes only.